Right, so we're on to exercises three, um, and there's there's three parts to exercises three. There's A, B, and C. Um, three A is uh, obviously the one I'm going to look at now. Um, it's uh, there's there's a few things that I think could potentially be useful, um, and uh, we looked at the uh, MIDI control um, in exercises two, uh, the end of exercises two. <coughs> um, and I thought I'd uh, introduce another uh, means of, you know, uh, external control, if you like, um, i.e. the keyboard. Uh, so uh, this one, exercises one of exercises three, A, uh, is um, to introduce this key object. Um, <clears throat> so as you can see from the right-hand side here, uh, the idea is to make a make your computer keyboard into a piano keyboard um, so that the keys Z to uh, comma will trigger the notes C3 to C4 um, all right. so if you look at the key object on the left hand side here uh, you'll notice that if I press a, um, <coughs> a, a letter on the keyboard um, you'll come out with an ASCII number well, I believe it's an ASCII number anyway uh, yeah, ASCII code of the key pressed. Um, and that's different for every single key, obviously. Um, so um, you can get select to recognise these um, the numbers of the keys that you've pressed and get them to trigger a note number into make note and note out. So that's, that's hopefully fairly straightforward. Um, uh, a couple of things perhaps to point out. Uh, if you press caps lock um, and press... The uh, the letters they are different they are different ASCII codes so different codes for different uh, for upper and lower case uh, the same is true for all your um, uh, additional codes so uh, exclamation mark the at symbol and so on they all have their different ASCII codes um, but uh, being able to select them as they come out um, it, you can uh, then <coughs> um, get them to trigger particular things. So they're quite useful as sort of switches and and so on in, in in a patch if you've got a performance patch. So I don't really need to go through any of that because I've just built it and shown you. Now you have a means of triggering MIDI notes from your computer keyboard, but these are of consistent length determined by the make note object. What happens if you want to make them last as long as you hold the key down? So the idea here was to duplicate the top part of the patch. Um, so this part. Obviously, I've only got the first five notes here. I didn't point that out before, but it's fairly obvious. Um, and I'm going to copy it across. Like that. Um, and I say change the key to a key up object. Oops. And what happens now, whereas you notice you notice on for the key object, uh, when I press the key down, uh, the number registers in the uh, number box just below the key object. When I release the key, that same number appears in the number box below the key up object. So we know that that is um, uh, sending the, the number on, on the release of the key, um, <clears throat> as it says here. All right, so uh, MIDI interlude. I'll need to open a different patch for this. So yeah, this was to point out that um, uh, keys will continue indefinitely, or notes will continue indefinitely until you tell them to shut up, which I've, I have explained before. Uh, so again, this is another one of those labouring points um, things, but uh, it's something that needs to be covered. Just checking time, we're all right. So I suggest that um, you uh, make uh, you send a, a number 17 to the program out outlet which changes the uh, timbre of your instrument um, to a organ sound to an organ sound and we'll send numbers directly to note out and uh, now normally we send it to the make note object this time we're sending it directly to the note out so 60 and 127 means that the note 60 and the velocity 127 are going directly to the note out so we'll click on that and the note continues stop that note we have to send it a note off message which is 60 with a zero velocity so we'll do that and it 
which stops it. So there's your note on, there's your note off, and obviously 127 could be replaced by any number between 1 and 127. At the moment I'm sending it as a list, but in fact it could be sent in a variety of different ways as you can see here. If I send a 60 and 127 to the first and the middle outlets of note out, it does exactly the same thing because the second inlet, or the middle inlet, is a, um, is a velocity inlet and the left one is a note one. So that one does exactly the same thing. So here I'm sending a 60 and a 0. And then the same thing here, this time we're just using it, we're using the same um, note uh, message box, um, but just triggering it again by uh, different uh, button objects, so the same, same thing exactly, so there you go. Um, and then I suggest that you <coughs> click on each one of these in turn, I think that's on the next page, yes. <coughs> and I suggest that you listen carefully to the results. Um, so if I press this one, we start the note, and then we can press um, 64 and 67. And what's happened there is that <coughs> excuse me, the last velocity that that uh, note out received it is remembered um, by uh, by the object and is sent along with the two new note numbers. one we've got um, the note 48 and the velocity of 64 which I don't think you're going to be able to hear actually this was not especially well planned on my part but in fact at the moment now having pressed that we've now got a, a, middle, a, a C below middle C at a velocity of 64 but it's inaudible because the other two notes are, are playing I'll, I'll prove that it works in a minute but then if I press <coughs> this um, uh, this message box we now have the notes 52 and the notes 55, both with the velocity of 64 being played, which again you can't hear I'm afraid, um, and then if you click on this one at the end it shuts them all up because all of them, 48 and a 0, 52 and a 0, 55 and a 0, basically means that all the notes that we've uh, triggered we're now sending a 0 to in order to shut them up. And again to prove that this, this one actually works, if I, there you go, um, we've got those two running okay, uh, at a velocity of 64, all of them at a velocity of 64, if I then change, um, actually I'll tell you what I could do to prove this again, uh, if I press 60 at 127 and then I press these two, <coughs> they're now a lot louder, again because they've, they've, uh, they're using the velocity of 127 because that was the last thing the note I received. So again, um, hopefully that, that makes sense and it's just to prove, as I say, that uh, uh, you need the note offs and also that note out will remember the last velocity that it received or the last messages that received well, as, as with a lot of the other objects it stores values once they've been received um, uh, and, and until they, they are updated or they're changed so I can get rid of that <coughs> back to this one <coughs> 